All right, well, praise the Lord. Let's just go ahead and get started this morning. Amen. I'm just thrilled and delighted you saw fit to join me this morning in the Tuesday morning trumpet. Amen. October the 10th, 2023. Praise God. Much to say this morning. And uh, the Lord's going to be speaking to us once again through his word today. Amen. So let me encourage you, as always, get you a good King James Bible, word for word translation. Follow along and and uh, see that uh, what the preacher's saying this morning is so according to the word of God. Amen. Judge what I preach and teach based upon the Bible, what the scriptures say in the context of the cross. And then I'll keep you straight. Me too. Amen. So glory to God. Amen. Well, uh, uh, I'm sure that to, to everyone has heard and seen and, and uh, you understand what's going on in the Middle East, especially in, in Jerusalem and in, in Israel today. Amen. And it's horrific and it's sad and it's heartbreaking as all of that is and it most definitely is. But I look at that and I say, well, this is just another tremendous sign that we are indeed, indeed in the closing of the, uh, uh, the church age, the time in which we presently live. The church age and the, the very day, the time in which we presently live is drawn fastly to a close. And, uh, uh, you know, people might would say, and, and sure, we need to keep our eyes and, and understanding uh, upon what's happening in, in, in Israel. Amen. That's Abraham's ranch. God's going to, Christ is going to come back one day and restore everything uh, back to uh, Israel, back to Abraham's ranch and uh, God's will in the beginning. And, uh, and we need to understand that. Amen. And uh, we pray, the Bible even instructs us to pray for peace in, in that region, peace in, in Israel, peace in uh uh, that place there, amen, and it's, it's such an important thing that we realize that not only is what going on, what's going on in, in, in that area is a sign of, return, of the return of Christ, however, let there be a word of caution in the midst of all of this, if I can interject this in a way that would be uh, acceptable. Amen. It's not so much that we need to focus upon what's happening there. We don't avoid it. It's not oblivious to it. To us, yes, we see and we understand. Amen. But the what we need to keep our eyes on is the condition of the church, the direction that the church is headed in. If there's anything that's a true sign of the return of Christ, it is the downfall of the church. It is the uh, falling away of the body of Christ, amen. That is what we need to uh, realize. That's what we need to understand. You put that in conjunction and, and with what's going on in Israel, the, the time is ripe. Uh, it, the time is ripe uh, for the return of Christ to come back for his church. And we're gonna minister a little bit upon that this morning. Yes, let's pray for, uh, for the people there uh, once again, I can't stress it enough. You know, my heart is broken over the many casualties, the deaths uh, up into to the thousands and the many that has been injured, all of the hostages that has been taken place by this evil and wicked people. Amen. And uh, yes, the, that, that really hurts this morning. But however, I have to bring us all back to the scriptures. I have to bring us all back to looking to what's going on in the church. Uh, I have reports. I don't listen. I don't watch uh, SBN anymore. We turned them off, uh, I believe it was about five years ago. Just turned them off. I don't watch them anymore. But uh, the report is, is that there's nothing more than just empty messages being preached there today, messages that are without any emphasis on the cross. And let me just remind you, and I apologize for this scratchy throat and this uh, this uh, uh, stuffed up head, amen, but uh, that just goes with this time of year. But uh, a message that has been emptied of the cross is not the gospel and contains no power to help the people, but only deception that will destroy the people. So we, we're in a time in the church age 
uh, where I see it like I've never seen it before. You know, we came into this gospel uh, 20 years ago, thereabout, uh, for most of us, that's where, about 18 years ago for us. But now we're seeing a, a tremendous falling away from that truth uh, that we were brought into. And if you don't see that, if you can't see that, or unwilling to see that, whether it's just uh, un inability or whether just out outright rebellion, uh, either way, you're part of the problem. And uh, uh, in the rejection of the truth that God has given us as it pertains to the message of the, of the cross. And, uh, and having said all of that, I'm going to take you to a few verses of scripture. Amen. In, 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 in first that let's begin in first Thessalonians. Amen. We'll talk a little bit about the rapture. They're going to tie that to the present uh, condition of the church and the falling away of the church in this final hour of the church age. That's where we're at. But you know, uh, the, I, when you look at the devastation, the lives lost, yes, that breaks your heart. Uh, you're not, uh, you're not human. You're not even human if it doesn't. Uh, but as a child of God, that just it, it just rips my part, my heart apart to see uh, the tragedy, tragedy that's going on in 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 the the region of Jerusalem, Gaza Strip, and all of that. Amen. But none of this is is taking God by surprise. It may uh, we we woke up to this, and it may have caught us by surprise. Uh, to a degree, but when I saw it, I said, yes, it's just another signal once again that Christ is soon returning uh, for his church. But I want to take you to uh, 1 Thessalonians. It's going to begin there. Amen. After having said all of that, uh, you know, I rejoice. There's a, there's a rejoicing knowing uh, that we're going home very, very soon to be with our Lord, Amen. That we're going to be taken out of this, out of this world, and we're going to be caught up to meet Him in the air, just as the Bible says, Amen. Now I want you to look first, and uh, I don't consider myself to be a scholar as it pertains to end time events, but uh, the end time word that we need to know and hear and understand is the message of the cross. That's the message for all times. That's the message that the Lord has given us to bring in a harvest uh, in this final age, the final days of the church age. To, to bring in a harvest of, of souls and to uh, equip the church, the body of Christ, to be able to stand and endure uh, during this particular time, difficult time, because if, if the church fails and falters, there's no place for the people to come to for hope and salvation. I hope you understand that. I, I thank the Lord. I thank God for what, he, what he's doing in the, the Determined Ministers group. We had a tremendous, I mean, I, I can't even find words to explain it, just a tremendous camp meeting uh, this past week in Palestine, Texas, where you had ministers and families and people from all over the country come together, amen, in one mind, in one accord, just totally focused upon the message of the cross. And that's the way it should be. That's the way God desires for it to be, that his church is wrapped up in what he gave us on Calvary's cross 2,000 years ago, which is his son crucified, Christ crucified. That's the gospel. That's the hope for all men candidate. That's the only hope that the people in the, the Middle East have. That's the only true hope that the the people in, in the Jerusalem or the people in Israel or the people in any other place, Gaza, the Palestinians, Palestine, Palestinians, or Palestinians, I'll get it out in a moment, amen, that's the only hope for mankind, no matter who they are, or where they're at, is the gospel of Jesus Christ and him crucified, there's no hope any place else at all, amen, so let's, let's look first, first Thessalonians, don't turn me off, stay with me this morning, I may have to go over a little over time, just bear with me, this morning, and let's let's hear what the Lord I believe is saying to us. Amen. As Brother Chris just said, we're seeing the handwriting on the wall. Amen. First Thess Thessalonians, 
chapter 4. And uh, listen, let's just read a little bit, okay? Verse 13. And, and the Apostle Paul, the, the Lord, through the Apostle Paul said, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. So this is something that we need to know, amen? Uh, that true blood-bought cross-preaching preacher and believer, amen, this is when the cross is deep down in your heart, you're looking for the return uh, of your Lord and Savior, I mean, you're looking forward, amen, to meeting the one and the return of the one that died on the cross to save us, amen, hallelujah, if you're not, then you're not wrapped up in the cross, amen, uh, the cross has crucified that old man, Seth, that old man that was at enmity with God, now we've been brought into, the enmity has been removed, peace has been made, brought into relationship, we're looking forward to being uh, with our husband, one that died that we might be uh, have all things that pertains to life and godliness amen salvation and everything all the great treasures all the inheritance that comes with Jesus uh, was made available to us at Calvary's cross amen if we'll only believe and then walk in what uh, what he has done for us amen believing all the time taking the cross up every day always amen and uh, denying old self amen and and, and its will and its desires, amen. And the only way you can do that is to embrace the cross and walk in the spirit, which is a, which is a faith walk, amen. Walking by faith alone in what Jesus did on the cross alone, amen. But, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. And he said that, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. We have hope today, glory to God, amen, as I've already said, uh, as, as heartbreaking as all of this is, in the midst of it, I can rejoice, amen, because I know that my Jesus is coming for me, and not just me, but all of those that love love him and this great truth, amen, he's coming for us one day real soon. It could be before this day is over, amen, but he said, Amen. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, amen, there you have it, his death on the cross. He was resurrected because of what he did on the cross, amen. The power of his resurrection is the power of the cross. Glory to God. And he said, even so them, even so them, uh, also, which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now, I'm going to stick with the note here for just a moment. Amen. This refers to the rapture of the church and all, all the resurrection of all believers with both phrases meaning the same thing, even as Paul described in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. At death, the soul and the spirit of the child of God instantly goes to be with Jesus. You have record of that, proof of that, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 23. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Our soul and our spirit at death immediately goes to be with the Lord. While this physical body goes back to the dust, at at the rapture, God will replace what was the physical body with a glorified body, united with the souls, with the soul and the spirit. In fact, the soul and the spirit of each individual will accompany the Lord down close to the earth. Now, he's not going to set feet back on the earth at this time. That will happen later at the advent or second advent of Christ. Amen. The return of Christ literally to the earth. This is the rapture of the church. We're going to meet him in there. That's what the Bible says. Amen. And it says, amen, which will then make the believer whole. Amen. Now, Let's just, just chew on these things as we go along. Verse 15, it says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Wish I had time to explain more detail all this, but just stay with me. I, I got to get to something that I feel like is more weighty at the present moment in time. Amen. And he said in verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, 
And it says, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. Amen. And uh, I titled this, this, these uh, Tuesday morning trumpets, uh, Tuesday morning trumpet, amen, which is an announcement that's being made every Tuesday morning by this old country preacher as it pertains to the things of the Lord, the scriptures, what I believe the Lord would have me to share, amen. And, and it's as those Old Testament prophets would put a trumpet uh, to their mouth, and it means that an announcement is going to be made, amen. And in the Bible, amen, speaks about this being the last trump, amen. Well, that's going to be the last announcement before the glorious return of Jesus Christ, amen. That's how I see it this morning. I, I'm just making announcement after announcement after announcement as it pertains to the coming of the Lord and the need for preparation to meet him, which is to deny yourself and take up the cross and follow him all the way into glory by embracing the cross. Amen. Hope you see that this morning. Amen. And then he goes on to say there in verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's the 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 sainted the sainted dead, those that died in the faith before uh, before this event, amen, they shall rise first. And then it says, after that, this is what I want you to pay close attention to in verse 17, because uh, I, that's referring to us presently, those that are in the church age right now who are alive today, amen. And he said, then we, which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We will rise up, meet him in the air. He's not coming back to earth at that time. We will rise up, meet him in the air. We'll receive a glorified uh, body at that time. Amen. And, but I want you to pay close attention to the word remain. Then we which are alive and remain. That's not referring to those that remain on the earth after the sainted uh, dead are risen first. That is speaking of those that are alive and remain in the faith. And the, and the, and the simple idea that the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul used that word remain tells me that there's going to be a great thought. That alone tells me, I hope your eyes can see that, and your ears can hear that this morning. That tells me that there's going to be a great falling away in the body of Christ, and there's only going to be a few that will remain in the faith. What, it, what is uh, Christ going to be looking for when he returns? He's going to be looking for the heart that's continuously standing in this liberating truth, which is Christ in him crucified. Once you look at that again, if you can't see it, ask the Lord to show it to you and reveal it to you. Then we which are alive and remain in the faith, those that are fighting presently, that good fight, amen, those that are continuing in the course that God has placed us on and in, those that remain in the truth, that truth is Christ and him crucified, those that remain in the faith, that faith is Christ and him crucified, those that remain in the gospel, that gospel is Christ and him crucified, amen. And he said, then we which are alive and remain, shall be called up. That's that's the, the, the rapture there. I know the rapture is not a biblical word, but it's the word um, speaks of a taking away or a catching away. And it says, the, which are alive and remain, shall be called up together, all at the same time together, amen, with him in the clouds. The word clouds there doesn't speak about the clouds in the air as we look from uh, earth and look up into the air and see the clouds. That's not what that's referring to. That's referring to the clouds of the many white-robed 
saints that will be gathered in the air to meet Jesus at that time. Glory to God. Amen. What a camp meeting that is going to be. Amen. When my Jesus I shall see. What a day. What a day. Glory. To, and ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake. That day is drawing nigh soon and very soon. Those that have, that have remained in the faith, that have not been uh, deceived and have not, have not uh, moved away from the faith, that's the reason Paul in his epistles warn us over and over and over, especially Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23, which I use so often he where he said continue in the faith amen these that are going to meet him in the air amen are those that have continued in the faith no matter what came their way they continued in the faith they remained in the faith that god recognizes which is faith in what he done for us through his son on Calvary's cross, amen, the sacrifice of Jesus, the blood sacrifice of Jesus, glory to God, amen, and he said, and he goes on to say there, we will meet him in the air, and, and so shall we, and from that point on, so shall we ever be with the Lord, so shall we ever be with the Lord. In verse 18, I'm going to come back to that briefly. Amen. Verse 18, it says, wherefore comfort one another. Amen. We're to comfort one another of this great hope and this great plan that God has for his children, that God has for all of those that are fighting the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. Against all of the slander. Amen. And all of the of the opposition and, and all of the persecution Amen. He says here, comfort one another with these words. Jesus is coming back. Amen. For those that remain in the faith, that fight this good fight of faith, that refuse to be lured away and, and, and taken away to something else. Amen. And, and the enemy right now, presently, is using every scheme, every strategy, every device in his arsenal to try to convince the people, uh, the church. He's after those, uh, uh, the, the people that are uh, embracing the message of the cross, amen. That's who he's after. He's already got the apostate church. He's already got the world. He's after that person. Amen. That claims the cross, that's preaching the cross, that's, uh, uh, that's, that's clinging to the cross. That's the one he's, uh, that he's after. But you don't have to be influenced by all of these influencers. You don't have to be distracted by all of these distractors. You don't have to be deceived by all of these deceivers that's presently at work in the body of Christ. Amen. You want to know where Satan is working greatly today? He's working in the body of Christ. He's working in the church. He's working in Christianity to, to deceive and to cause people to, to forfeit their faith in the cross. I mean, every strategy that, that, that he has, he's polishing up a lie uh, all the time and dirtying up the truth to cause you to look away. Amen. But don't fall victim to it. Stand fast in the faith. Glory to God. By the grace of God, in Endure everything that's coming your way. Hallelujah. And, 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 and continue in the faith. Stay stabilized, steadfast right there at Calvary's cross. And don't be moved away from the hope of the gospel. Glory to God. And he said, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. And even backing up to verse 17 and said, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I say it all the time. The true child of God is clinging to this cross. He's marching through this land, trying to gather and bring in a harvest. Those that will believe, those that will get on board the modern day ark, which is the, the message of the cross, by the way. Amen. We're just passing through this world. This world is no longer our home. Hallelujah. Don't get so attached to this this world, what what we're going to be, what we, actually we should have already left it behind. Amen. 
uh, Galatians 6 and 14, Paul said, I glory in the cross, amen, whereby the, I'm crucified unto this world, and this world is crucified unto me. Let this old world be out of our system, out of our out of our mind, amen. So now we're, we're simply glorying in the cross, which is going to uh, allow us to meet Jesus in the air one day soon and, and cause us for, to ever be with him, amen. My citizenship is in heaven, Hallelujah. I'm presently I'm just like a pilgrim. Just a this is a strange land to me. My eyes is on being with with Jesus in glory. Amen. So I'm looking forward to that day. Hallelujah. Amen. The world's gone mad. The church has gone to sleep. Amen. Keep your eyes on the cross and you'll be with him in glory. Amen. That's what the Bible teaches. That's what I'm imploring for the people to come back to and look to today. Now, after having that, let's flip a couple pages over. Let's go over to 2 Thessalonians. And I want you to look at, at chapter 2 real quick, amen. And, uh, and, and look what it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and beginning in verse 1. And Paul said, Now we beseech you, brethren, we beg you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, refers to the rapture uh, uh, of the both the rapture of the church and his second coming, that he will be behind the rapture, amen. We're going to be raptured up. We're going to go up, spend some time with him. Glory to God. It's going to be a great time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then there's going to come a day when we're going to saddle up and we're going to ride back with him to Jerusalem. We're going to settle. He is, amen. I'm coming back with him, amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Settle all that dilemma and all of this fighting and warfare in in, in Israel, amen. It'll be settled on that day, amen. There won't be any true peace on earth until he comes, amen. But he says here, but by our gathering together unto him, amen, strictly refers to the rapture. We're called to be gathered up, raptured up, and called up to be with him in there. Now listen to what he says. That you, he said, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or trouble, or be troubled, amen, troubled by what, amen, well, all of this false doctrine that's coming in, amen, D don't be troubled to the place to where you jump on board with it, amen, recognize it for what it is, we've been, we've been equipped, amen, to recognize that which is not of God, those that know the truth, know who's telling the truth, amen, and uh, our, our our instrument of discernment is the cross. Amen. I know the word of God is as well, but the word of God is pointing us in its entirety. Amen. Old Testament and New is in pointing us to the cross. Amen. So our main instrument of deception is the cross. It's just simply this, ladies and gentlemen. If it's not 100% all about exclusively about what God's given us through the death of his son, if it's not about that, we're to turn from it. Amen. We're to throw it in the burn pile. Amen. We're not to go in that direction. Amen. But if it's 100% all about exclusive, the exclusive message of the cross, what Jesus accomplished there for us 2,000 years ago, and it was even in the mind of God before the foundation of the world. It's always been about the cross. God has always been about the cross. The gospel has always been about the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But it, when we hear that message, that's what we need to give our ear to. Amen. That's what we need to hear. Amen. And we'll grow in this great gospel. We'll become more solidified. Amen. Our heart will become fertile ground where that this truth can just take root and let it just it'll just go deep into our heart, into our spirit. Glory to God. And he says, I got to get back to my text. And he said there that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word, amen, nor by letter uh, as from us. Notice that word as. 
nor by letter, not, you know, not by, you know, stick to the word of the Lord, which is Christ and him crucified. Stick with what the Spirit is saying in this last day. The Holy Spirit is, uh, first, Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 11, which says that the Holy Spirit is always handing us over to or always delivering us to death, which is identifying with our union uh, with the death of Christ on the cross. It's, it's speaking about the cross. The Holy Spirit is always delivering us to the cross so that the life, amen, the abundant life, amen, of Christ might be manifested in our mortal flesh. Glory to God. It all comes from Christ. He's the source, but the cross Cross is the main, so the Holy Spirit is always pointing us to and, and leading us and, and speaking to us about what Jesus did at Calvary and, and reminding of a, us of our co-crucifixion with him on Calvary's cross. I'm crucified with Christ, Galatians 2 and 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, amen, now by the power of God I live, but the life that I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith, the truth, the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It takes us right back to Calvary. The same redeeming work that took place to save us in the beginning, that's where we anchor our faith and we continue to draw from that same power that redeemed us in the beginning. Glory to God. Amen. And he said, uh, nor by letter as from us, amen. Now pay close attention to that. I know that there were those in that particular day that were sending out false epistles. There really wasn't an epistle at all. There was false letters and they would sign the apostle's name to it, but it wasn't of his hand. It wasn't inspired by the Holy Spirit. It was just an agenda that someone else had and they knew that if they attached Paul's name to it, amen, or Silas or any of those of that day and time, but mainly the Apostle Paul, amen, if they attached his name to it that the church would buy off of. It's no different than what we see today in the church going on. Jesus said that there would be many that would come in my name and they would deceive many, amen, and those that were come, that are coming in his name, they're not so much saying I'm Jesus, or I'm Christ, as they are saying I am of Christ, but they're not because they're presenting another Jesus. They're just using his name to get in the door. And so many in the church is doing that today with the name Paul or the Apostle Paul. They come with their own message. They come with their own agenda. They come with their self-will. They come with their self-serving message. They come with all sorts of things, and they, they present it as as if Paul is saying it, or as if the, it's of the Bible, or it's of the Word of God, amen, and that's the reason we need to, uh, we need discernment, amen, realize that it's a, if it's a part from the cross exclusively, see the deceivers, they bring these things in, they might mention the cross, amen, that's happening, and it happened this past Sunday in a lot of churches. The, the cross was just mentioned, amen? Listen, let me tell you something. If the cross is just mentioned a time or two, that is deception. That is the enemy working to try to belittle or undermine the need for that message to be exclusively in the cross. Then they might go on to preach and teach about other scriptures of all sorts. Maybe I can tell you what those key phrases are going to be. It's going to be love and it's going to be grace. It's going to be love and it's going to be grace and then every once in a while the word cross might be thrown in. Amen. But all of that is deception. Amen. The the message of the the, the, the true gospel is going to be 100% all about what Jesus did at Calvary for our every single need. Not just for salvation alone, but for everything, amen, all things that pertains to life and 
godliness. Glory to God. Amen. What Jesus did at Calvary is our answer for all things. Romans 8, 32, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. By his divine power has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. The answer is found in the cross. The answer to whatever you have need of is still found at Calvary's cross. Don't be swept away with those that were swept away in Noah's day because they rejected what God was offering through the ark that Noah, the preacher of righteousness, was building. Amen. The preacher of righteousness today, amen, is going to be preaching the cross exclusively, adding nothing to it, taking nothing away. He's going to be careful to keep it pure and keep it powerful without leaven, but the majority of the church today, they have no concern for the leaven. Amen. Just let a little come in, but the Bible says a little leaven rejects the whole lump. Amen. Hallelujah. And we are to do the same. When we when we see this eleven being allowed to come in, and then even excuses made for that. Well, let me tell you something. There's no there's not going to be any excuses accepted when you stand before the man and uh, Jesus Christ with nail pierced hands. All oh, there won't be any excuses accepted on that day, and God's not accepting any excuses today. Amen. Remember that. Okay, so where am I at? Uh, so even if it's presented as the Apostle Paul, amen, examine it carefully according to the Word of God in the context of the cross, amen. And, he's, and he goes on to say, as that the day of Christ is at hand, amen. And uh, let, so the, the day of Christ is, uh, refers to all the events after the rapture. I know it's referred to as a day, but it's really a span of time, amen? A, a, a time that will be taking place after the rapture that it is referred to as the day of Christ. Let me read it here. Day, the day of the Lord refers to all events after the rapture Amen. Some were claiming, even in Paul's day, that the second coming was about to take place, which of course, of course, was wrong. Today, I hope I'm making this perfectly clear. There will be the rapture of the body of Christ, the sainted dead. We'll meet him in there. Amen. We will experience the day of Christ. We'll be spending some time with him in glory. Things are going to take place. Amen. During that time, but then there's that time is going to pass away quickly. Amen. And then we're going to ride, we're going to come back, amen, with, with Christ to liberate uh, Israel, amen. And he's going to literally, amen, establish a, a throne in Jerusalem where he will rule and reign on earth for a thousand years. And you and I, the born and begin believer, those that remain in the faith, amen, shall rule and reign with him. Glory to the Lamb of God. There be no more war. There be peace. Hallelujah. True peace. God given. God sent peace. Amen. And um, he goes on to say here, now look what he says in verse 3. He said, let no man deceive you by any means. So in the midst of this, uh, uh, where we're Paul said, take these things, these words, and comfort one another. In the midst of that, amen, he says also, let no man deceive you, amen. The Holy Spirit knew what would be going on in this final hour of the church age. There would be a great falling away, but don't let no man, not any man, let no man deceive you. Don't fall victim to following uh, popular and well-known preachers simply based upon what they said and done in the past. Amen. You can't base that, you can't base following people, uh, ministers or ministry based upon the great things they've done in the past. Amen. You, you listen to the, what they're saying today. 
now, not what they've done in the past, amen. That's deadly. That's dangerous, amen, to, to base your uh, allegiance to a minister and a ministry based upon history, what they have done, no matter how great that may have been, no matter how many people may have been saved under that ministry during that time, you have to, you're responsible. Let, let no man, it's your responsibility. Let no man deceive you. It's your responsibility amen, to examine your heart, amen, and be certain that your faith is in the proper place lest you be reprobate, cast away, amen, amen. Remain in the faith. He's coming back for those that remain in the faith, those that's fought the good fight of faith, those that are just simply desires to identify with a ministry or minister, a big name, little name, whoever, they just want to identify with, with that person for whatever the reason, they're being deceived, amen. And he said here, let no man deceive you by any means. Now, here we go. He said, for that day, speaking of the rapture of the church, for that day shall not come except there be, except there come a falling away first. Amen. So before the rapture uh, takes place, and it could happen at any moment because the falling away is happening right now. It's not something that's going to happen. It's something that has happening, uh, happened, and it is happening, and it's going to increase. It's not going to get any better. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that in this day and time in which we live today, right now, that men, and it's referring to those that refer to themselves as being Christian, these men shall wax worse and worse, being deceived and going about deceiving others. So you see how all of this is coming together right where we are. We just need to open our eyes. Amen. Remove the, uh, re remove the, the scales from your eyes. Amen. And unstop your ears so that you can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in this final hour and, and allow your eyes to be open to see it and begin to turn from all of this deception and walk in the very truth. Amen. Of Christ in him crucified. Amen. And you won't find yourself among those that will be left behind. We'll gather with him in the air. Glory to God. But that word falling away there is, is uh, derived from the, the word apostasia. Apostasia, where we get the word apostasy. And that means exactly what it says. Amen. This falling away means to forsake. It is indeed a falling away, falling away from the faith, falling away from the truth. Amen. So the rapture is going to take place when this falling away is in motion. It already is. So look for Ladies and gentlemen, look forward, amen, to hearing that shout. Look forward to that being, uh, to being caught up to meet him in the air. That's going to happen, amen. Praise God, it could happen today. And I say, come quickly, Lord, come quickly. Hallelujah. What a day that will be. Hallelujah. And he said, let me read it again. Let no man deceive you. Amen. By any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Amen. And I know uh, Brother Swagger uh, applies that to the rapture itself. I disagree with that. I think it means exactly what it says. It's referring to the falling away of the body of Christ. How, that's where we're at. We need to recognize it. Amen. Those that can't see it, those that can't recognize it, amen, they are being deceived. They have, uh, and if you don't repent and come back to the truth, you'll find yourself among those that have embraced a strong delusion, amen. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 through 4, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts. Amen. After their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Amen. And shall be turned to fables, and fables are the words of men. Turning away from the truth is the message of the cross. Amen. But uh, the, the Bible says, 
And, and I referred to it briefly there, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 through 11. It speaks about those uh, that God just hands them over to a strong delusion. They become wanderers. They wander away from the gospel. They've been deceived. They, they, uh, so they wander away from the truth. They leave the, pr the truth, and God just hands them over to a, that strong delusion because it says because they received uh, not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So we know that they're speaking of the message of the cross because there's nothing else that will save. There's nothing else that will sanctify. There's nothing else that will bring up, that will produce fruit in the life of the believer, amen? Nothing else. So we know that's speaking about the cross of, the, of Christ, amen? They receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So because of their determination to go in that way, we're determined to, to, to embrace the cross. I'm determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. If everyone goes by the way of the spirit of Antichrist, that's a work in the world presently, the Bible says that, the spirit of Antichrist is already at work in the world. Amen. And the spirit of Antichrist is to move people away from the cross. The spirit of Antichrist, Antichrist is to be Antichrist. Amen. Praise God. Let that get a hold of you this morning. Amen. So he said, because they received not the love uh, of the, the truth that they might be saved, God handed them over to a strong delusion. And I believe, personally, and there's others that believe, that is right where the church is at today. They just continue on in that path that they're going stubborn, amen, unwilling to admit that they're wrong, amen, and, and un, unwilling to repent, stubborn, and, and just continue to go on in their death march, amen, and if you continue in this delusion, thinking that something else has been sent to you of God, and that the cross, you, there's no need to put emphasis on it, here you are, amen, now you're speaking down about the cross, now you're belittling the very ones that you used to be a part of that are determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now you speak against that, you can rest assured you're involved, you're in this strong delusion, amen, hallelujah, and you need to recognize nice that today. Amen. We're trying to waken some people up out of their slumber and realize where they are and where they're headed. Amen. Uh, now, having said all of that, and let's let's look real quickly, and I know I'm fast and running out of time, as always. I want to take you over now to, to Revelations real quick. Amen. And, and I know I'm, I'm covering a, a good bit of territory here this morning, and uh, I'm, I'm kind of covering it quickly. Amen. You might need to listen to this message again. Amen. Take notes and write these things down and study it out for yourself. Amen. And uh, look at uh, Revelation chapter 19. Amen. Revelation chapter 19, real quick. And I want you to see something uh, here in, in uh, Revelation chapter 19 and verse, let's just begin in verse 11. Now, this is speaking of the second coming, not the the rapture of the church, but when Christ will come back and all of those that were raptured out, all of the saints of God, the true believers, the blood-bought remnant that God, that Christ now has with him and glory will return with him. Now, I want you to see something here. Amen. Uh, look what it says at Revelation 19, 11, and, and John the Revelator, he said, and I saw heaven open. There's going to, after the rapture, there's going to be a day the heaven's going to open up. Amen. And behold, a white horse. And he who sat upon him was called faithful and true. You have to wonder who that is. Amen. That's Jesus Christ himself, the one that is faithful and true. He is faithful and true today. 
praise God, my Redeemer, my Savior, amen, he is the one that is faithful and true. Turn away from everything else that's pretending to be faithful. Turn away from everything else that's pretending to be true and come to the one who is faithful and true. His name is Jesus, and it's what he did at the cross that makes him faithful and true to us. Amen. And he said there, and in righteousness, he does judge and make war. Amen. And it says, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head are many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Amen. And it doesn't, that doesn't mean. Uh, that it's not comprehensible to men, amen, but it means the death of who he is, amen, the death uh, of who he is and all that he has done uh, can never be fully uh, under, under put, put a plumb line to, amen, because praise God, even before the foundation of the world, he was Christ slain, he was the lamb slain, amen, and forever he will be the lamb slain. Glory to God. Amen. And, and now listen to what it goes on to say in verse 13. Here's what I want to show you. In verse 13, it says, and he was clothed. When he comes back, we're coming back with him, the second advent to liberate, uh, to liberate uh, Israel, amen, and return all the land back to Abraham's ranch, glory to God, and he says, and he was clothed with a vesture, that's speaking about his garment that he will have on that day, his vesture, he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, that word dip there is derived from the word bapto, or as baptism, in other words, so when he shows up, his garment is it's going to be as if as if it, it's going to be dipped in blood. It's going to be totally covered in blood. And it says, and his name is called the word of God. Amen. So on that day, amen, Jesus Christ, no one is going to separate Jesus from the from the from his blood and what he did at Calvary. There won't be any separating Jesus on that day, amen, as so many people are doing today, trying to present a Jesus apart from the cross, amen, just as they began to do when Jesus was crucified on the cross. If, if they were shouting, if you are who you say you are, come down off that cross, deliver yourself, and save us too, amen. But there was one on the cross, amen, that opened his eyes to see the truth, and he spoke to Jesus this moments before he gave up the ghost, Amen. And he said, when you come into your kingdom, I said, that kingdom is not on earth. Amen. That kingdom is to come. Glory to God. Amen. But we're presently in his kingdom because we're in the king. It's not anything on earth presently. Amen. His kingdom is not being put together on earth presently. It will come not one minute before he sets foot down on the Mount of Olivet. Amen. When we return with him at the second advent. Glory to God. But this thief on the, this repentant thief on the cross said, will you remember me when you come into your kingdom? What does that remind us of? Well, it tells us that the only, the one, the only thief or the only one that day that was willing to be crucified with Christ stepped into glory with Christ. Amen. Only the one that was willing to be become crucified with Christ that was not blasting the cross, that was not belittling the cross, that was uh, ignoring the cross, but the one that was willing to die with Christ, be crucified with him, that's the one that will enter into God's kingdom, enter into glory with him, and the same thing holds true today. Only those that are identifying with our crucifixion, co-crucifixion with Christ on the cross, identifying with his death, 
We will be the ones he's coming back for. We are his remnant. Amen. We are those that are remaining in the faith. We are those that are remaining in the truth. Amen. And we for, will forever be with him in glory. What a great and glorious time that will be. But I want you to see that again. No one on that day will be attempting to separate Jesus from his blood. Amen. And no one on that day, amen. I think this is beautiful how the uh, the Holy Spirit revealed this to us through uh, John the Revelator. Amen. His name is called the Word of God. No one on that day will be separating the Word of God from the cross. Amen. As they are attempting to do today. Amen. And those that are trying to do those, anyone that would that would show up and try to do that on that day would be foolish indeed. Amen. And the same holds true today. Those that are attempting to try to separate the word of God, the written word, from the blood of his cross, from his sacrifice, which so many are trying to do now, they are foolish indeed. Amen. We hear people say all the time, well, you don't have to mention the cross in every message. Yes, you do. If it's not a me if, if you're not pointing to the cross, and it needs to be more than just mentioned, the emphasis needs to be on the cross. And if you're not doing that, it's not a message that God has given you. It's not a message that the Holy Spirit is giving you because Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will take of mine, speaking of his atoning work on the cross of Calvary, and he will show it to you. The true man of God will be showing and presenting to the people the same thing that God, the Holy Spirit, is showing us and presenting us to, always handing us us over, delivering us to the cross, to death, so that the life of Christ might be manifested in our mortal flesh. Oh my goodness. So it's foolish indeed. And we need to recognize it as such. It's foolish for these to try to preach. They're not really preaching the gospel, to preach a message and ignore the cross. Amen. When they do that, it doesn't matter how many good scriptures they use. It doesn't ha matter how much they talk about love. doesn't matter how much they talk about uh, the, the, the uh, grace. doesn't matter about any of that if they're not uh, joining that or tying that to the cross because apart from the cross, none of that can be applied to us. Amen? The, the cross is the place of application. The cross is the place of power. Amen? Apart from the cross, there can be no application of all the good scriptures that's being presented. And once again, the, the, the two main key phrases that's being used and presented today is love and grace, love and grace, love and grace. Without the cross, any type of love that you're operating and presenting is nothing more than a fleshly produced love. Apart from the cross, you can't have the grace of God. The grace comes to us because of what Jesus did at Calvary, amen, and our faith in, the, in that. Then we have the, 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 the abundant work of God's grace. Grace now reigns in righteousness, amen. Grace now reigns in, our, in the right standing that we've been given because of our faith in the cross, amen. Apart from the cross, you don't have the love. It's just a it's just a made up kind of love and people use that love to try to tear the true gospel preacher down, amen. You know, it's, it's interesting that they, they preach about love but they're unable to love God's remnant. They're unable to love that cross preacher. They're unable able to love that one that's determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. They have a love that will draw people to them, amen, but they don't have a love to be able to stand with the, with the gospel, the, the preaching of the cross. I'm going to tie that to some interesting, I've got just a few minutes. I want to tie what I've just said and, and bring all of this to a few statements or a few verses of Scripture in, in Proverbs. You know, Proverbs are written by Solomon, the son of David, 
uh, and, and the, the Proverbs are filled uh, with the wisdom that is from God and not man. And I want to I share with you a, a few verses of scripture in closing here from Proverbs chapter 7 and verse, let's start right there, Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 14. And this speaks about that strange woman. And, and if you're, it's, that's, that strange woman is, is threaded throughout the, the writings of, of Solomon in Proverbs, the, 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 the writing of wisdom, so to speak, <clears throat> the wisdom of God. So the wisdom of God, he desires that we understand deception, to be able to recognize it, amen. But in Proverbs chapter 7, in, in verse 14, this is that strange woman that represents false doctrine. And listen to what the, this strange woman and false doctrine has to say. They come and they present and say, I have a peace offering with me. In other words, they come to make peace. They come with, with love. They want to draw you into their false peace and their false love. We come offering you something other than the offense of the cross. We come offering you a more pleasant message. We come offering you something where we just... Are, are, are united, are uniting uh, with all people of all kinds and all faiths. We just all get together on, under one banner, and that's that ecumenical movement which I refuse to sign up for or with, amen. Uh, the, the, the message of the cross is exclusive. But we're, with that, we're not excluding anyone. We're simply presenting the only avenue whereby you can be included. Amen. We've been given, we've been reconciled by the blood of the cross. Amen. And we have been given a ministry of reconciliation. So we preach the very message that saved us and present to the people the only way that you can be reconciled is through the blood of the cross. Apart from that, you're at enmity with God. But now you come, here comes this strange woman, amen, false doctrine, and, and they show up and they say, I have a peace offering with me, amen. But it doesn't mention the blood sacrifice. It doesn't mention the offering uh, of blood. It doesn't mention the offering uh, of, of, of the, 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 well, the cross. I mean, so you have these people today so, so fitting. What we see today, they come, amen, they present, oh, well, we love you. Thank you, Brother Treadway. It's spiritual adultery, amen. It's what it is. It's a strange woman, amen. It's, it's, it's something apart, amen, from the true gospel. But we come and we present to you peace and love, amen, and, but it's not of God, amen. It's that, to, for us today, it's that spirit of Antichrist that's already in the world. First John chapter 4 and verse 3, the spirit of Antichrist, amen. It's all about love and peace. When, when the Antichrist does show up, it's the spirit that's presently working the world, amen, and, and a, more so in the church than anything. When he shows up, he's going to come, amen, presenting a love, a, um, excuse me, a message of peace, which incorporates love for everyone. He's going to come show with lying signs and wonders, amen. The church is being primed. It's being, the, the, the stage is being set. The church is being made ready, amen, to accept the Antichrist with open arms when he shows up. I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for the return of Christ. You don't have to be deceived today if you'll repent of the direction that you're going. You can be delivered from that strong delusion. Your eyes can be open again if you will just allow the Holy Spirit, his conviction, to work in your life one more time and convince you that the cross of Christ is the only hope that God has given mankind. Hallelujah.
Amen. And, and now just stay there in Proverbs for just a moment. Amen. I'm going to move down and there's so much there, but I've just selected particular scriptures because I believe it, it highlights more so where we're at. I hope you see what I'm talking about. Amen. That message all week. You know, I, I watch people. They leave the cross message preaching church. Then they huddle up with people, amen. They, they climb Fool's Mountain is what they do. And when you climb Fool's Mountain, when you get to the top, amen, there's going to be a crowd of people there that's going to make you feel good about your rebellion. That's going to make you feel good about your departure uh, from that cross preacher and that offensive message of the cross. I mean, the cross is offensive to the flesh. Amen. What you're trying to do is to salvage flesh. You're trying to salvage self-will. You're trying to salvage your way by leaving uh, the 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 message of the cross and that uh, wrecking ball that the Holy Spirit is going to bring to your flesh. Amen. And. Uh, so look at look at Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 18. Here's that strange woman speaking still, which is false doctrine. It says, come. So the message of, of, of the, the, the spirit of Antichrist, the message of false doctrine is saying, come also. Come over to where we are. Amen. But the message of the church is saying, come too. But our message is saying, come to the cross. Amen. The spirit and the bride say, come, but we're saying come to that water, come to that fountain that, sp that was sprung up at Calvary's cross. Come and drink of the water of life and drink of it freely and drink of it abundantly. And that spring has, that well has sprung up at Calvary's cross. Amen. Now look what it says, Proverbs 7 and 18, come, let us take our fill of love. Amen. Let us, how many times have I heard, not only as it pertains to myself, but other determined cross preachers, well, they just don't show love. They don't love us. They don't, there's no love in their message. Now, hang on to that. I know you've heard it. It's being said everywhere. We're just unloving, amen. Well, it's, a, it's the attempt of the enemy to convince you to gather with those that are, that are promoting a false love and departing the message of the cross. And, and he, should, he goes on to say, come, let us take our field of love. Let us comfort ourselves. Let us comfort ourselves with loves, plural. Amen. Let us comfort ourselves with loves. Amen. And so the enemy is putting out all of these different messages from all of these different directions, from all of these different uh, ministers, and they're being brought in to the cross preaching body, amen, and they present a message of loves, amen. They present, they present something other than the agape love of God that's all wrapped up in the cross, Amen. And, and so what that does, it causes the, causes the church to go in many directions, seeking many affections. But the thing of it is, there's no greater love than what Jesus did for us on the cross 2,000 years ago. Amen. There's no greater exhibition of the love of God than the man Jesus Christ laying his life down on Calvary's cross, not just to save us, but to provide us an inheritance in all things that pertains to life in Godliness. No greater love, and there is the love of God shed abroad in our heart. But having said that, I want you to be reminded of what Paul said or God said in First Corinthians chapter verse excuse me, first Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 6, it uses the word charity, but it's speaking of love. Charity is love. But look what it says in 1 Corinthians 
13 and 6. It says, love rejoices not. Love rejoices not in iniquity, and anything apart from the cross is iniquity. Anything apart from faith is sin. Amen. Anything apart from faith in what Jesus did at Calvary in the eyes of God is wickedness, is 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 of darkness, is sin, is iniquity. And he says in 1 Corinthians 13 and 6, let love rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Glory to God. Those that are experiencing the true love of God, which is, is Calvary, that's the same place that they're rejoicing. Amen. Hallelujah. Those that are not able to endure sound doctrine, and that sound doctrine is the cross. Amen. All doctrine is made sound by virtue of our faith in the cross and, and tying scriptures to the cross. That's where it becomes sound doctrine. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, the, the reason for that is preservation of flesh. The cross is going to crucify us to flesh. The cross is going to deal with flesh in a great and mighty way. Amen. So people want to preserve their way. They want to continue to cling to what mama and daddy used to do or what they said. They want to cling to what they want to go where the crowd is going, where everybody is going that way. Amen. We'll see his flesh that's crying out. Well, you go where the masses are going. You go where the crowd is. That's flesh. But the spirit man, the spiritual man said, no, no. The spiritual man, amen, is saying it doesn't matter if everyone goes that way, whatever that way is, I'm going to keep clinging to the cross because God, through his word and through the Holy Spirit, has revealed to me that that is the only place that I can come into union with the thrice holy God. That's the only place that I can, I can be preserved. Hallelujah. That's the only place I can be saved. That's the only place I can enter into glory. That's the only place that I will rule and reign with Christ forever and ever and ever. Amen. Do you see that? Now, let me give you one more Proverbs, and I'm going to try to close with this. And I sure appreciate you staying with me this morning. Let me encourage you. Don't just like what, what's being said here. And I appreciate you folks listening to this old country preacher and liking it, but share it. Help get this truth out. Time, the time is is urgent, amen, that we do everything we can to to get this gospel out. This reason I don't come to you, tell you fish stories and swap recipes, amen. I'm, I'm, I'm pointing you to Calvary's cross. I'm reminding you that we're standing at the very threshold, amen, at the very door of the coming of Jesus Christ and all his power and glory, hallelujah. And I want you to be a part of that great day that's soon to come. I want you to be saved today, amen. The Bible says today is the time. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the point of time. Don't put it off. It's no time to be playing with your soul. It's no time to procrastinate. It's no, it's no time to put salvation off. Amen. It's no time better than right now to repent of your wrong direction, preacher, and all and be reminded of all, not just you, but re, be, re, be reminded of the deception that you're bringing into your family, your own household. Be reminded, preacher, of all of the people that you, are, that you are deceiving and leading astray. Be reminded of that today. Consider what you're hearing today and take heed of what you're hearing today. Now, go on over to, to Proverbs chapter 7, and I'm going to, uh, yes, chapter 7, and I'm going to pick up with verse 25. Now, listen to what it's saying. It's still talking about this strange woman, still talking about false doctrine. Listen to what it says here. It says, Let your heart, let not, let not your heart decline. That means, you know what decline means to go down. Let not your heart go down with these that are being deceived and going about deceiving others. Let not your heart decline. Let not your heart go down. Don't be among those that are going down and falling away. This, this is God speaking to us today. 
Don't be of those that go down with the falling away. Don't be of those that are falling away from the church. Let not your heart decline and go down to her ways. Her is that strange woman. Her ways is that uh, that false doctrine. What is false doctrine? Well, false doctrine is simply this. It's anything apart from emphasis on the exclusive message of the cross. Anything, I don't care how good it sounds. I've already said it. I don't sound like a broke record. Does it matter how many people go that way? Does it matter how much money they have? Does it matter how big church they have? Does it matter how tall their steeple is? How many stained glass windows there are? They can have 24 deacons and, 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 and 30 associate ministers, two or three pipes. None of that matters apart from the cross. None of it. It's all make-believe. It's all part of the great deception in the day and time in which we live. But the Holy Spirit is telling you and I today, let not, you don't have to let it happen, let not, let not your heart decline and go down to her ways. And he goes on to say, and he says, go not astray in her paths. Go not astray in the many paths the many avenues, the many ways that's coming into the church for us to go, grow. Smorgasbord of, of all, just a pot of all sorts of things are being stirred up in the day in which we live. You have many choices of things that you can uh, depart and go into. Now, just like when we first heard the message of the cross, we were going in many ways. We were of that wandering bunch at that day and time, going in many different ways. Everything had our attention. We just jumped on board with whatever came through town that was beating the loudest drum at the time. We just jumped on board with the with the bandwagon, amen, going in many different ways. But then we heard the message of the cross. The answer to everything that you have needed, the, the light came on. We saw it in the word of God. We couldn't get enough of it. Glory, it became thirsty and hungry after this message of righteousness. Nothing else would satisfy. And our ears were trying to turn away and, and anything and everything else. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And the only way that we can follow him is by taking up the cross and denying ourselves daily. That's the only way that we can follow him. Glory to God. Our, te our ears were tuned and trained. Our spiritual antennas went up to hear nothing but the voice of the Lord. And we learned that all of the, that God is speaking about is what he accomplished through his son 2,000 years ago. Praise God. God for the revelation of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Don't walk away from it now. Amen. Don't throw in the towel now. Don't turn away from this liberating truth now. But he said there in Proverbs chapter 7 verse 25, let not your heart decline. Go down to her way. Go not astray unto her past for she, look what it says, for she, false doctrine, has cast down many wounded. Amen. The only thing that Aaron, a departure from the faith is going to do, it's going to bring you down wounded. But there's healing in the blood today. I said there's healing at Calvary. Hallelujah. I said there's healing in the blood. He was wounded for our, tra he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastity chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. You can be healed of that spiritual decline today. You can repent, come back to Calvary. God through his son Jesus is still there with open arms to receive you back into the Father's house. It's not too late yet. Glory to God. We're pleading. I'm pleading. The Holy Spirit amen is pleading today to turn from your wicked way, to recognize it and come back to Calvary, come back to Jesus Christ and him crucified. Are you still with me? And it says, for she has cast down many wounded. Yea, listen to this. It says, many strong men have been slain by her. Many strong and mighty men 
had been slain by her, this strange woman, spiritual adultery had been slain by this false doctrine of many types that's creeping into the church, amen, and perverting the true gospel. Many, we have watched, I've watched it over years, many strong men have been slain. I'm talking about those that presented themselves at one time, being strong in the truth, great leaders and uh, of the truth, they have been slain by this strange woman and false doctrine. And speaking of where we are today, Amen. This pointing is the the pointing the finger of God is pointing right in your face today. And he says, and I'm just going to close it out right here. Once again, let not your heart decline. Go down to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. For she has cut down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. And look what he says. Her house... Amen. False doctrine, anything other than the cross. Her house is the way to hell. Going down into the chambers of death. Amen. And the thing of it is, you're getting this right straight from the word of God. I'm just a messenger boy this morning. These are not just things that I'm saying, but this is God, the Holy Spirit. The Lord didn't lead me to these verses of scripture. Amen, just to boast in something I have said, no, no, these things, they get a hold of me, just like I pray to God, they get a hold of you today, the, the entirety of the world, the entirety of the body of Christ needs to hear this, this truth today, amen, but I want to, I want to, one, just one more time, in Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 30, reminds me uh, of, of Jeremiah and how uh, he would say that, Lord God, I preach your word, but none will hearken unto my way. It even records the people say, saying, we, we hear what you say, Jeremiah, but we won't hearken unto you. That's where most of the church is today. They bought off on that strong delusion. Closing in Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 30, and it says, and they would, that means that they consent to, or desire none, of my counsel, that they would, they consent to, or desire none of my counsel. They despise my reproof. Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Let me read that again. This is the Holy Spirit speaking to you, speaking to me, and speaking to the body of Christ, those that has an ear to hear today. The Lord is saying to you, don't be among these. Amen. They would, which means they consent, they consent to or desire none of my counsel. This is the counsel of the Lord that's being spoken here this morning. He's our counselor. And his counsel is to come back to the cross. But many will despise my counsel. They despise my reproof. Amen. And it says, For therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. If you go by your own, <coughs> own way and your own devices, the only place that you'll find yourself in the end will be in that pit called hell and going down into the chambers of death. As I close this morning, I want to remind you one more time that these things are being presented to you. Not Wayne Voss, it's not just what I say, it's thus saith the Lord. Don't try to brush it off, oh, that was uh, the Old Testament. No, he's speaking to us right now, today. God is speaking, and God is reaching, and God is warning in this final hour. The message of the cross is the, the great thrust of the Holy Spirit in this final hour to bring in a remnant, to bring in souls and to establish the church in this truth one more time. You see, if we're not preaching the cross, there can't be a harvest because the blood of the cross, Christ and him crucified, is the only place that we can be rid of the sin dilemma that will hold us captive. Hallelujah, the only place, the only way. 
Glory to the Lamb of God. Father, I ask you this morning, Lord, that you would touch the ear of the hearer this morning. Let everything that's been said this morning, I know it came from you. It's not capable that it would come from me. Lord, I pray, God, that the heart would be made fertile. God, that that old stony heart would be removed this morning. That the heart would be made fertile ground in this, root, this truth would be deposited upon the fertile ground of the heart this morning, that it would take root, that it would drive itself deep, that it would manifest into changed lives, that the repentance would come, that people would return to this great liberating truth. God, help us that are standing in this truth today to be able, by your grace, God, to be able to continue to stand in this final hour of the church age, by your grace, we can do it, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, and help us, Lord, just to continue to grow in this marvelous grace that's only found at Calvary and in this great knowledge of Jesus Christ, who he is and what he did at Calvary. And I ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said amen and amen. <clears throat> Praise God. I truly love you this morning love you each and every one if we're still here tomorrow amen let me encourage you to join us back tomorrow night at 6 30 for the continued for the faith broadcast we're we'll going out right here on facebook once again god bless you love you each and every one see you next time